Hello. In this video, we will discuss a useful technique of integration called the substitution method. This technique can be used to find antiderivatives of various functions. Because of the fundamental theorem of calculus, we often need to find antiderivatives when calculating a definite integral. The substitution method is obtained from the chain rule, a rule used to differentiate a composition of two functions. However, the substitution method is not as straightforward as the chain rule, and it might be tricky to use. Let's start by presenting the substitution formula. If f is continuous and g is differentiable, then the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x dx equals the integral of f of u du, where u equals g of x. This means that when we need to integrate a product of two functions, f of g of x, namely a composition of two functions, and g prime of x, the derivative of the inner function, then we can use this formula and basically integrate the function f only with respect to the variable u, which equals g of x. Let's look at a simple example. Evaluate the integral of 2x times e to the x squared dx. Here, we need to integrate a product of two functions e to the x square is the composition of the exponential function and the function x square, while 2x is exactly the derivative of the inner function x square. So we can do the following. We let u equal g of x equal x square, and then the derivative g prime of x is equal to 2x. We take the outer function f of u to be e to the u, and then the given integral can be written after changing the order of the two factors as the integral of e to the x squared times 2x dx. Using the substitution formula, this would be equal to the integral of e to the u du, which is equal to e to the u. Now u is equal to x squared, so e to the u is equal to e to the x squared, and then plus c, as this is an indefinite integral. Now let's have a look at another example. Compute the integral of x times the square root of 2x squared plus 1 dx. Again, we need to integrate a product of two functions, and the second factor is a composition of the square root function and the function 2x squared plus 1. So we can start as follows. We can let u be equal to g of x equals 2x squared plus 1, and then the derivative g prime of x would be equal to 4x. Now here we have a little problem, as x is not quite the derivative of the inner function, and the coefficient 4 is missing. Nevertheless, we can easily deal with this problem. Let's take the outer function, f of u, be equal to the square root of u, and then we can rewrite the given integral as 1 over 4 times the integral of the square root of 2x squared plus 1 times 4x. We didn't change anything, as we multiply and divide it by 4, but now the 4x is exactly the derivative of the inner function g of x, and we can apply the substitution formula. When we do that, we get a quarter times the integral of u to the one-half du. This can be easily evaluated using the Powell rule for anti-differentiation, and we get a quarter times two-thirds times u to the 3 halves. After simplifying and replacing u by 2x squared plus 1, the inner function, we obtain 1 over 6 times the square root of 2x squared plus 1 cubed plus c. As you can already see, it is not always obvious how to choose the right substitution. And in practice, you might need to try a few substitutions and find the one that works. In certain cases, we might need more than one substitution, and we will see that in one of our next examples. Also, remember to express the final answer for an indefinite integral in terms of the original variable, x in our examples, and not in terms of the variable u. A few comments before we move on to our next example. First, the substitution method can be used to compute definite integrals which might represent areas, volumes, 
average values, and so on. Here's a substitution formula for definite integrals, which is very similar to the one we used so far. The substitution formula for definite integrals is integral from a to b f of g of x times g prime of x dx is equal to the integral from g of a to g of b f of u du. Note that in a definite integral, when we make a substitution, we have to replace the bounds a and b with new bounds, g of a and g of b. Let me also emphasize that in an indefinite integral, the answer should be given in terms of the original variable, x in our example. And here is one more remark about an informal notation that is often used when making a substitution. If u represents a function g of x, then the derivative g prime of x can be written as du over dx. This is the Leibniz notation. Now we can informally multiply both sides by dx and write du equals g prime of x dx. This notation is often used when making a substitution and we replace g of x by the variable u and g prime of x dx with the quantity du. Let's see how this is done in the next example. Find the integral of 10 sine to the 9x cos x dx. Here we need to integrate a function that contains a power of the sine function multiplied by the cosine function. And since cos x is the derivative of sine x, it makes sense to try the substitution u equals sine x. So let u equal sine x, and then du would be equal to the derivative cos x dx. In the given integral, we replace sine x by u and cos x dx by du. We get the integral of 10 u to the 9 du. This integral is equal to u to the 10, and when we go back to x, we obtain sine to the 10x plus c. In this example, we need to find the definite integral from 0 to 4 of the function x divided by the fourth root of 2x plus 3 dx. Here, it is not clear at all which substitution is going to work. But the denominator is a composition of two functions, and the inner function is 2x plus 3. So we are going to take that as our u. So if u is equal to 2x plus 3, or in other words, x is equal to u minus 3 divided by 2, then du would be equal to the derivative 2 times dx. Or we can write it as dx equals to du over 2. Performing the substitution, we get the following. 1 half times the integral from 3 to 11, u minus 3 over 2, divided by u to 1 over 4, du. How did we get that integral? Well, dx was replaced by du over 2. The 2x plus 3 in the denominator was replaced by u. And x in the numerator was replaced by u minus 3 divided by 2. Also note that the bounds have changed. When x is equal to 0, u would be equal to 3. And when x is equal to 4, u is equal to 8 plus 3, which is 11. So the new bounds for the variable u are 3 and 11. We now simplify the quotient to get 1 over 4 integral from 3 to 11 u to the 3 quarters minus 3 u to the negative a quarter du. And we now integrate to get 1 quarter times 4 over 7 u to the 7 over 4 minus 3 times 4 over 3 times u to the 3 quarters from 3 to 11. We now sub in the bounds and compute the difference and we get 11 to the 3 quarters times 11 over 7 minus 1 minus 3 to the 3 quarters times 3 over 7 minus 1. We can simplify that and get 4 over 7 times the fourth root of 11 cubed plus the fourth root of 3 cubed, 
or just use a calculator and get approximately the number 4.754. Note that this number is the area of the region bounded between the graph of the function and the x-axis from 0 to 4. Now let's move on to our last example. Evaluate the indefinite integral of 2 times ln e to the x plus 1 over e to the x plus 1 times e to the x dx. Here the expression e to the x plus 1 appears twice and its derivative is precisely e to the x. So we start by making the substitution u equals e to the x plus 1. If u is equal to e to the x plus 1, then du is equal to the derivative e to the x dx. When we make the substitution, we get integral 2 ln u over u du. Again, e to the x plus 1 was replaced by u, and e to the x dx was replaced by du. Now we need another substitution, as the derivative of ln u is 1 over u. So let t equal ln u, and then dt would be equal to 1 over u du. When we make that second substitution, we get the integral of 2t dt. This is equal to t squared. When we go back to u, we get ln u squared, and when we go back to x and replace u by e to the x plus 1, we get ln of e to the x plus 1 squared plus c. To summarize, the substitution method is used to compute integrals that cannot be computed using more elementary techniques. It is not always easy to choose the right substitution, and we might need to use more than one substitution. The du dx notation is often used in substitutions, and the method works for both definite and indefinite integrals. As always, watching this video or reading about substitutions in your textbook is not enough. You must practice and work on problems on your own. And for that reason, we included a few practice problems you can start with. Thank you for watching, and good luck.